Welcome everyone. It is the SCRS webinar series. My name is Laura Sant. I'm the director of the Collaborative Sciences Center for Road Safety and we are hosting this series. Um, we are one of two nationally funded centers under the FAST Act that has a designated um, research focus on transportation safety. And we bring together staff, faculty, and students from UNC, from the Highway Safety Research Center, the Department of City and Regional Planning, the School of Public Health, as well as our four consortium partners that you see here on the slides, Duke University, FAU, Berkeley, and Tennessee. And just a little bit about our series as we get started, if you haven't um, been part of our three prior webinars, um, our center is aim to bring together diverse disciplines to help us reimagine road safety and develop new systems oriented tools uh, that advance safety and health for all road users and um, we are very happy to have this webinar series to showcase some of our research um, if you go to the next slide krista please our research really falls into four core areas uh, we promote um, research that helps to define safe systems principles and practices and integrate that work into Vision Zero programs across the U.S. Uh, we also fund uh, fundamental safety research that helps um, understand emerging travel trends and technologies, including e-scooters, automated vehicles, and all the changes that have happened since COVID-19. Uh, we do a lot of work um, preparing and equipping future leaders through our university courses, student-led research, and K-12 activities. Um, and we also fund research to develop uh, innovations around safety data, technology, and methods. And that's really the focus of today's webinar, um, the new innovations around safety data and data management uh, that we're trying to bring to light. Uh, we're very excited to be focusing on a new resource that has been developed with our research funding looking at how we can improve access to pedestrian and bicycle safety data, which we know to be an understudied issue. The next slide, please, Krista. Um, so I am very excited to have our researchers here that I will introduce. Um, Krista Nordback is here on the line. Um, she's a senior research associate at the UNC Highway Safety Research Center. Uh, she earned her doctorate in civil engineering from the University of Colorado, Denver, in which she focused on developing new methods for estimating bike traffic. And she has performed extensive research across the U.S. looking at non-motorized traffic counting technologies, programs, and data collection systems. And she is joined by our colleague, Wes Kumfer. Uh, Wes also has a doctorate in civil engineering from Texas Tech University. He joined the Highway Safety Research Center in 2017 and his research focuses on traffic safety management through a systems-oriented approach. And he's been involved with research related to crash modeling as well as safe, as well as safe systems implementation. So both Krista and Wes has, have served as the research program manager for the Collaborative Sciences Center for Road Safety. And so we're very excited to have the two of them join today's webinar series and share their own contributions to the research agenda. And I'll turn it over now to Krista to introduce um, the research team. But before I do that, I also want to thank Kelly March, who is um, in the background today helping facilitate this webinar. And if anybody is having any challenges with audio or any other questions, feel free to use the chat to reach out to, um, to Kelly or me. So the floor is yours, Krista. Great. Thank you, Laura. Um, so I want to uh, thank the rest of the team. We've had a really great collaboration here. The Collaborative Sciences Center, it's heavy on collaboration. So um, I want to thank our, our team at UNC, Seth Lajeunesse, Libby Thomas, Katie Heuser, um, Richard Lytle, and Gr Graham Russell have been the getting the website going and, and maintaining the database. Um, so that's a really important part of this project. And then I also have um, we we're fortunate to be joined by Julia Griswold from UC Berkeley, who has um, really done a huge amount of work to um, clean this data, to make sure that it is the right data um, to inform all the work all along the way. Um, so she's a UC Berkeley safe track researcher and has too many degrees for me to list. So <laughs> welcome, Julia. Thank you so much for being on the line and feel free to jump in anytime. 
um, as I go through um, the presentation. And I should also mention she's had an amazing group of students there at UC Berkeley who have helped build this database. Um, so pedbikedata.org is what we're going to be talking about. And the first thing I want to do is start with a um, poll question that Kelly is going to do for us. Yeah, so I'm going to launch a poll. You should see it on your screen in a few seconds here. And it's just about have you visited pedbikedata.org? Yes, no, or unsure. We'll give you a few seconds to fill in your responses. A few more seconds and then we'll close the poll and look at the results. So we have 29% have used pedbikedata.org in the past, 57% have not, and 14% are unsure. Great. Well, it's good to see that some people are. Um being introduced to this maybe for the first time um, but you're welcome to go to the website during the um, presentation and um, th oh this is my cat Maggie who uh, may make some cameo appearances okay um, so the purpose of pedbikedata.org is to assist safety researchers in identifying bicycle and pedestrian safety related data um, the primary reason is for safety studies and we want to improve the number of safety studies and the quality of safety studies. Um, so that's why this is directly related to CSCRS's mission. Um, of course, other people, other than safety researchers, can certainly use this um, and are welcome to, but that's been our main focus. Um, we'll talk today about the literature reviewed, um, the interviews we did of, of researchers, inventory of what's in the database, the rating of the quality of some of these data, um, identifying where there are gaps, and um, then a framework of development and so forth. And then Wes is going to do a um, demo of how to, some basic how to use the website. I mean, it's pretty clear, but um, he'll walk you through some of the neat features, especially some of our new features. For those who have seen the website before, we have new features. Okay, um, so Wes, feel free to jump in, of course, anytime. Um, the literature that was reviewed, uh, we were looking at data from safety analysis and trying to figure out what data are safety an analysts using. Um, so collision data, exposure data, um, spatio, spatial, um, socio-demographic type data, and infrastructure data. And uh, here's just, a table. Yeah, go ahead, Wes. I was just going to say, I might add that, uh, you know, the intent whenever we were doing the literature review was really to find data sets and databases, so not just what data is out there that can be used for safety analyses, but really how, where do people go to find the resources that they need? And so we did some very targeted searching in trade and other data, uh, sorry, other literature search engines for database, data set, pedestrian and bicycle data specifically. Great. Um, so you can see that there were a lot of um, data sets here identified in the literature um, for pedestrian and bicycle data. And all of that, this is documented in our, our report, which is accessible on pedbikedata.org. Um, so we also interviewed researchers. Um, we chose eight safety researchers originally. We expanded that to nine in our, our next phase. Um, and we asked about what resources they use, what, what's missing, um, what they would like, um, percent of budget that's going to uh, data collection and cleaning, um, and how this clearinghouse can help them. So their answers were um, that, of course, they needed collision data and they used collision data, um, exposure data, infrastructure data, as we've mentioned before, also transit data. Um, missing were hospital data, <laughs> as many of you already know. Um, crash typing, risk perception, exposure was still missing in a lot of cases. Where are sidewalks? Some basic stuff. Um, but I think it's really interesting that um, we see that a lot of budget is being spent on data collection and cleaning. 
So we've got 60% of project cost could, on average, from respondents, might be spent on data collection and cleaning. So that that's a huge amount that we could save if we had a better data um, systemic data collection me methods and a way for researchers to get that data in a way that they can use um, that's been validated. So a lot of work that can be done in that area. Um, then we did more research uh, on the second set of interviews after we created the very first pedbikedata.org. Um, to see how we should improve it. And one of the top re things that needed to be done is, is maintaining the URLs. Um, they also recommended improving the geographic search capabilities. So we're doing that. Um, we have done that and we now have the search by state. Um, they also wanted us to improve the user interface and, and rate the data sets for quality, um, identify model data structures and improve existing clearinghouse listings. So we were able to do some of that in the second phase. Top uses, um, I think this is interesting. Not only did they wanna find data for, for analysis, but they also wanted some data for homework assignments. So um, that's the academic perspective, you need that. Um, and uh, so we did make some improvements in phase two, including data checking. Um, so making sure that the existing data we had in there was, was um, correct and um, linking to the right data. Um, Julia, do you wanna say, add anything there? Uh, well, the other big thing we did that I don't think is quite covered here is um, we uh, worked on improving our data dictionary and making sure the coding was going to be useful for um, searching through the um, data sets um, so that we could uh, improve the functionality on the, the website search. Yeah, that's a good, really good and, point. And then applying that coding to the 4,000 data sets. Right. Um, and we also, uh, created a search by state and by year. And we're working on the last two um, as we speak to um, be able to better add new data sets and fix our broken links that are constantly breaking because that's what happens with URLs. Um, so we just added the state and uh, year searches. And for those of you who have looked at it um, long, you know, a year ago, um, I hope that you go on and, and try those out um, because that we, we just added those last week. So uh, we looked at a search of 50 states, metropolitan planning organizations, cities, and um, cities over 100,000. Um, and the original data set was about 4,000. Um, the new data set is more like 3,000 after we cleaned things, as Julie was mentioning. Um, and we categorized them by type. So we don't have every single type of data in the world. We focused on collision data counts, um, counts or volume data um, for exposure and infrastructure. Um, geographic scale, we, we have a variety of geographic scales and 90%, 92% are publicly available. We really focused on those data that you can find um, freely on the web. Um, so data sets by type, we have an inventory with um, mostly count, a lot of count data, some infrastructure data, and fewer data sets that are collision. But a lot of those may be wider in scope. Um, then by geographic area, cities, of course, there are a lot of cities, so we have a lot of data sets that are city specific, um, but also some state States also have a, some some data, and there are only 50 of those. So um, having having uh, 20 20 percent state data is, is actually pretty good. Data formats, um, unfortunately, PDFs are still very very common in pedestrian and bicycle data. So that that's a problem because those are hard to work with. But GIS is the second um, highest. Um, and then spreadsheets. So those are much easier to work with if you're gonna be using those data. The rating of the data sets. Um, so we did not rate all of the data. 
we would like to, but we did not have time. So we focused on the statewide data sets to limit how much we had. And this is um, based on our original research. So again, this is all documented in our CSCRS report, um, which is uh, linked on our website. So we looked at um, the non-PDF data for states and we rated, tried to rate them on a five-star rating. We looked at temporal completeness, spatial completeness, and linkability. So temporal completeness, you only have one year, that's not gonna help much if you're looking uh, um, at um, trends over time. Um, but if you have 20 years, that's much better. Spatial completeness, um, do you have all of the intersections in your city or do you just have two? Um, linkability would be, can you link the data you have to your GIS, for example? Um, so we also weighted these and of course the weightings could be changed, but this is what we started as a first draft um, with linkability being, being slightly less important than temporal and spatial completeness. Collision data rating. Um, so this is just to give you an example. All of this again is in the report if you want to get the, the details. But temporal completeness, um, we looked at, okay, length of time versus for years. And again, so each of these is rated differently for different types of data. So we wouldn't use the same um, we did not use the same um, rating values for count data that we used for collision data. So this is just an example of what we did for collision data and how we rated that. Um, so was the date provided, was the time provided, and how long um, did we have that data record? And then spatial completeness, um, we looked at is this um, all the entire, so again, this all of these are state data. So is it just for one city or is it the whole state? An intersection versus non-intersection, do we have non-intersection data included? And then linkability, um, do we have the latitude and longitude? Um, is it linked to a hospital report? These types of things. So um, that's just an example. And to give you the summary of what we came up with in for the state data we looked at that was non-PDF, um, we see that for collisions, um, we have a fair number of three and four star, so that's that's good. Um, in general, we don't have a lot of five star data, so that's bad. Um, the count data, we, we're lacking statewide count data, um, so that, that's a problem, and the data we do have tend to be three or four star. Um, and then the infrastructure data, uh, we had a lot rated two star. Um, so a lot of room for improvement there. Um, so that's just a summary. And again, um, we'd like to continue this in future um, work. So the data gaps we found during this investigation um, is that we need better measures of exposure, we chose to focus on the count data, but of course there are many other data types that we did not include in this particular effort, this first effort, um, such as the Strava data or other um, um, uh, crowdsource data. Um, we need the ability to link data sets. Um, that's often missing in many of these data sets. And the accuracy of the data needs to be assessed. Um, and that probably needs some work on, on the user, or the, sorry, the data provider end, um, and then we could act as an evaluation metric. And then the funding. <laughs> All this is great, but if we have no money to do it, it's not going to be done. So I'm hopeful that in the future we may have more funding for data quality, for database maintenance, um, and, and so forth. I hope that happens. Okay, our next poll. Um, data uses. Kelly, can you bring that up? Absolutely. It should pop up on your screen there. This one is asking what type of pedestrian and bicycle related data you use. Traffic volume data, including pedestrians and bicyclists, crash collision data, infrastructure data, and other, including hospital data. And again, we'll give you a minute to answer those and then we'll look at the results. Do 
give you a few more seconds. Okay, so it looks like we have 52% have used crash and collision data, 33% traffic volume data, 10% infrastructure data, and 5% other. Great, thank you so much. Um, and now I'm gonna turn it over to Wes um, to do a little demo of the new website with the new search terms that um, we've been talking about. And Kelly, you're switching to me. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, um, Krista, can you see my screen? And yes. can you see the website? Yes. Wonderful, okay. All right, everyone, I just want to give you a demo with some sample scenarios of how you might use pedbikedata.org. And so this is the landing page of our website. Sorry about that. And you'll see uh, here we have in the middle uh, all the different data types. So your search is going to be uh, based upon what you choose here as the data type. So this is the only required element. Uh, the rest of these can help you narrow or broaden your search based on whatever needs you have. So um, you can look for those data sets that are immediately available versus those by request. So Krista mentioned that, you know, we really did focus on the immediate uh, availability and 92% fit that, but there are some that are more by request that we think are important and are included in the database. Uh, formats, again, uh, GIS and spreadsheets might be very helpful, but there are probably still quite a few PDFs. And then geographic scale, uh, you can narrow in on specific cities if you are trying to just see what sort of city data sets might be your state. Uh, maybe you're doing an evaluation and you want to know what some other cities done that are similar to this countermeasure that I'm putting down, what kind of crash results did they find? That might be one particular use that you could have for this uh, data website. And then uh, search limits, you can actually select a specific state to look into and you can set a, a year range. And I will show you how to do that. I do also want to mention that for all of these different fields, we have a user guide that we developed. So if you click that button user guide, then you can scroll and just check some of these different parameters. So collisions tells us, you know, we're dealing with crash data. Counts tells us how we define these, so whether it is um, more annualized measures like annual average daily traffic or non-motorized traffic or dealing with specific time sets such as uh, traffic monitoring data, short duration counts, that sort of thing. And then infrastructure, so if you are interested in say street network center lines, um, things like speed limit signs, street lights, those might be what you search for there. If you're looking for bike facilities, say you want to know more about bikeways or bike lanes that are available on the uh, national scale, then you would look within bike facilities. If you're interested in say sidewalks, trails, paths, greenways, ramps, uh, those be considered in pedestrian facilities. And then we also, where possible, included things like mass transit, railroads and railroad crossings. Um, and the rest, as I said, are optional. So availability just checks whether or not you can instantly get that data. Format, geographic scale, search limits, and state. All right, so I am going to um, go ahead and walk you through a few different search scenarios. So the first, let's go ahead and just start with some collision data. So let's say we want to see what kind of um, crashes are available at the city scale. So we might click collisions. And let's say we don't want to have to put in a request for this. We want this immediately. So we click immediate. Now let's say that we aren't really concerned with our format. Maybe we have a skilled data analyst who can take whatever format we get and put it into Excel himself or herself. And uh, so we're not gonna worry about that part. But let's say that we want to uh, you know, do a city search. So then we could do that. And let's say that we want to limit this to a five-year range. This is the five-year range of a project we've been working on. And so uh, we want to see if anything else was done during that time period. So we could, for a starting year, 
select 2015. And then for an ending year, you know, you might select 2020. And we have, you'll notice in here, we have some um, ending years that are after that. That's basically just to uh, allow us to, as the database persists, hopefully to continue to update that end range here. So we do this search and let's see what we find. Wes, it also, it also wow, includes actually, some projected data, just, uh, you know, sometimes we have some data that's been estimated, so, in the future. All right, yeah, thank you, Krista. <laughs> so, we actually found 24 results here. Um, that's pretty good. So, we can scroll down and see, well, City of Fayetteville has traffic crashes. This is in Arkansas, um, in the GIS layer. Uh, Mesa, Arizona, looks like they have crashes uh, listed as an other type of data. California has these in a spreadsheet. Um, there's a Vision Zero end of year report in PDF. Let's go ahead and pull up one of these GIS though so I can show you what the details page uh, looks like. So after you get that list of search results, if you want to know a little bit more about one of these items, you can click that details link and this will bring up a bit more information. So it tells you who owns the data um, and put the data website together. So this is from the Arkansas Department of Transportation. Uh, it's at that city scale because it's from Fayetteville. We see the date ranges that we specified. We see the format. We see the availability. And dynamic seems to imply that this is um, updated. And so this is, uh, sorry, one thing I should specify now that we're examining this more closely. We put 2020 as an end date, but we see 2018 as our end date here. Now, what we did is we ended up capturing data that fell within that five-year range even if it wasn't a full five years of data. So we can click this link then and pull up this URL. And this looks like it's going to be loading an ArcGIS page. Hopefully this loads quickly. I guess uh, the webinar puts a little tax on the system, right? It's initializing. Okay, so this pulls up Fayetteville, and if you have used GIS, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can um, check your layers, you can look at notes. Uh, this tells us lots of fatal crashes. A way that you might use this, just for those who are curious, is to look at where are my fatal crashes concentrated? Uh, this could be kind of thought of as a heat map. So we see, you know, along these what look like big corridors is where we're seeing a lot of fatalities. That may give you some idea of, um, you know, areas to inspect. So that might be one way that you could use this website uh, for searching. So another thing I want to show is if you click this button, new search, after you've pulled up details, it will bring you back to the home page where you can initiate a different search. However, the other thing I want to show, since we still have the search page up, uh, there are a couple of things that you can still do here. So you could export all of your results to Excel. And what this will do is just take all 24 results and put them into a spreadsheet for you um, that will have some of that data and information that you are looking for. All right, so it looks like this is about to open. And this can be really helpful if you have a lot of search results and you just want to search it yourself. Yes, and you want to filter it. Um, so yeah, all of those same kind of de detailed fields that we are telling you are available in here. This could be a nice way to save some search results, uh, put them on a flash drive if people still use those. I guess I do, but I'm not sure if ever, anyone else does. And then pass these off to one of your colleagues. Uh, so that's a nice option. And then uh, the other thing, if you wanted to say you got these results and you're looking through and you're like, well, I only really want to focus on um, say stuff in Louisiana. I see several from Baton Rouge there. So you could actually then scroll down and pick a, a specific state that you want to look in and then research, because uh, we're doing research, and then you pull up nine different results there. So that's a way, once you already have the results, you can keep kind of narrowing in on your page. So I already showed you, if you click that new search button, you go back to the home page. So I'm going to do just that. So that was the collisions. Uh, let's look at some different counts. So let's say that we want to do only pedestrian counts. So we click this button. You'll notice that that did not initiate the counts, a larger option. We have specified just pedestrians. Okay. 
And um, we are going to look for regional stuff. So I'm not going to worry about immediate or by request or format again. But let's say I want to look for what regional accounts do we have? And I'm going to say look in California. And I don't really care too much about the time frame for this one for whatever reason. So we do a search and we get one result here. And we see, oh, well, San Diego has bike and pedestrian counters. So I click details. Pull this up, and you'll know that um, these are listed as volume types, has the years 2012 to 2020. We didn't specify dates again, so it kind of just pulled up what was available. And we see the format is other. Uh, let's see what this could be um, as far as an other type of data set. What this looks like is it's projects within a dashboard. So you'd have to uh, go to the dashboard uh, website that they have listed here, and then you could inspect that dashboard a little bit more. Okay, so that's one way that we might um, do a more narrow search for accounts, but let's do a broader search for accounts. And again, I clicked that new search button. So I'm going to click counts now, and you'll notice when I check counts, I checked all of them with that. Okay, and let's do immediately available here. And let's again do a region. Let's say that, okay, well, I captured San Diego region. I want a broader region here. Um, and I want to see whatever is available across the whole United States. And I am going to pick uh, a date range of 2012 to 2020 this time. So I got a sense, you know, maybe that one region there with those years, but let's see if we can capture other regions, maybe some other data types. So we do a search. And you'll see now we have 29 results, quite a bit more. And we have some interesting stuff now. So we have pet, uh, bike and pedestrian count geo database for Chicago Metropolitan Agency. We have the District of Columbia has a regional uh, area and actually several there. We see um, a few more, District of Columbia, District of Columbia. It looks like a lot of that is from here, um, but from different owners. So this is VDOT, these are traffic hourly volumes. And we could click, um, say just on the bicycle automatic counts daily, we could click details that. And we see that this is from Washington Department of Transportation. Again, it's a regional data set. And I chose this one because it is a spreadsheet. And so we click this and um, this is going to again load a page here. And this one is publicly available. So even though there's a sign in button there, um, looks like it's uh, mostly working. I apologize. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So um, we can see here we have a spreadsheet. So this tells us um, where our counters are, what the count was, and then different dates. You can see inbound or outbound, uh, what type of user and locations. So this could be a really helpful data set. If say you are within the region and you're trying to do analysis and you want to see what kind of bike volumes you have. And it looks like you could download on that page as well. So let's go back. I've shown you collisions and I've shown you counts. Let's take a look at some different infrastructure now. Um, so let's start with street network and center lines. Let's say that we are just really kind of interested in what sort of street data are available. Um, again, remember these could be things like speed limits, traffic control facilities, that sort of thing. So we're going to click that and we want to know, okay, what is available by spreadsheet? And maybe we want to narrow in just on the state of Maine for whatever reason. Okay, so we click Maine and we search. All right, so I'm not getting a whole lot here, except if you have a multi-state. And I click that multi-state, oh, I found HSIS. So for those of you who've used HSIS, this is a large crash database with data from multiple states. And many of these data sets do have roadway data linked to the crash database. Um, the thing to note with HSIS, and we can see this if we click the details button, is that HSIS data is only available by request. This is not immediate. So that's a good thing to note whenever you're doing this. And uh, there's a note actually on this page that you know this does cost money 
And you know, depending on your budget for your project, um, it could you know cost a, a prohibitive amount. Sometimes it, it may not. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for. But this would be an option of uh, one of those important data sets that we included because it is important, but also it is limited availability. Okay, and now let's go back and do a new search. And in this last one, um, we're gonna look for pet facilities, okay? So we're gonna do pedestrian facilities and let's limit this now to GIS. So we again are only interested in GIS and let's say we're trying to do, um, we wanna do some collision analysis, or sorry, conflict type analysis in Florida. So we wanna know where pets are walking. Um, so we wanna see what sort of facilities are there kind of thing. So let's do 2010 to 2020 in Florida. And let's do a search. And what do we find? Well, we actually have some city results, some county results, and some state results. So under cities, we see specific cities like Bonita Springs, Cape Coral, Fort Myers. Um, under county, excuse me, we see Broward, Lee. And then under state, we just see some larger things such as uh, sidewalk barriers for the whole state, uh, FDOT's transportation data and analytics office, and then sidewalk wide step TDA. And all of these you'll note are GIS based. So those are all the search options I had, Krista, if there's anything else you want me to specify, but I think hopefully that demonstrates some of the uh, practicality. Thank you so much, Wes. That was a really um, wonderful uh, demonstration of some of the features. Um, can you show them how to do multiple states? Um, so if you, you hold down, I believe it's control and you select um, multiple states, you can um, then then search for, you know, if you want to do Connecticut, Florida, um, and North Carolina, for example, you could do three states if you wanted. That's right. Yeah. So um, Krista, as she mentioned, if you hold down the control button and then click, say, click Connecticut and then added it to Florida as well, and we also have North Carolina here, so we can just scroll down, find North Carolina. Again, hold control and click. Um, looks like there's a little bit of lag there, but don't be alarmed. And so you hit search. Okay, that actually, we can tell just based on the fact that now there's a regional result that we found more stuff. And so the MPT data download um, for North Carolina, oops, looks like we ha now have, um, Looks like health park ticket has been added to the search. And it looks like we also got Asheville, North Carolina for bicyclist cautionaries. All right. So yeah, that's how you would add more states. And you could do that once you've already done your search if you want to uh, say widen your net. Thanks so much, Wes. And that's that. super helpful. Um, so I'm sure there, there may be some questions on this uh, later once we get into Q&A. So we may return to the demo. Um, but uh, for now, I'll finish up with a few more slides if Kelly can, unless, if, if we're ready. Okay. And can you see my screen? Yes, Krista, we yes, can see it. Yes, Krista, I can see it. Great, okay. Um, so our next steps here are to finish up the internal improvements that'll help us to update our URLs and add new data sets. Um, some of you may may uh, have data sets that are not showing up um, that we need to make sure to add. I will note that there are some data sets that are hidden in the current version um, because we hadn't had time to clean them properly. Um, so, so some of the 3000 are not included yet. Um, and so hopefully we will in the future be able to clean all of that and uh, make sure that, that we have all the correct fields and URLs. So that's an ongoing um, process. And then we also wanna spread the word about this wonderful resource. So let your colleagues know, um, we'll also be doing additional webinars, um, but feel free to, to share information on pedbikedata.org with people you know. Um, and then in the future, we are hoping to get additional uh, funds, maybe through CSCRS, um, maybe other sources. Um, to develop some data standards. I think you may have noticed in the um, 
interviewee responses, they said they were very interested in developing the data sources, data standards for our data sources. Um, we also would like to continue this rating system I was talking about earlier to expand that to all of our data um, and be able to rate that and so that you could choose the quality of data you want in your um, in, in the search field. Um, like a star rating. If those of you who are familiar with the CMF clearinghouse, it would be similar to that. Um, and then, of course, we want to continue to let people know about this resource and improve it. So those are our basic next steps. Um, and with that, we have one more poll question, but I just want to again thank Wes and Julia for their amazing help um, for all these years we've been working on this. And um, I really appreciate it. A lot of, a lot of uh, time and thought has gone into this. Um, and feel free to reach out to any of us um, if you have questions. Um, and let's start our last poll, Kelly. Okay, our final poll is about data quality. The question is, how important is data quality to you? Highly important, moderately important, or not important? We'll give you a minute to fill those out and then we'll check the responses. And I, I have to tell you, I, I know this is a hard question to answer sometimes. Um, for those of you who do a lot of different types of uh, analysis, maybe it's uh, like, well, it depends on what I'm what I'm doing today. Um, but for those of you who do more typical, think about your typical analysis or typical data need um, as you answer this question. Keep it open for a few more seconds. Like the majority of you think it's highly important, 85%, moderately important, 14%, and not important, 2%. Well, that's good. I'm glad that we all value, or we have a high value usually for data quality. That's great. Um, and I'll turn it over to Laura to announce our next CSCRS webinar. Yes, well, um, we do have uh, one more webinar uh, in the lineup. We do these every few months. So the next webinar um, will be uh, featuring another uh, set of researchers from our research consortium um, talking about um, the media's coverage of uh, road safety incidents and how we can uh, you know, better frame safety issues. Um, but before we move on to that next webinar, we do still have plenty of time for questions and answers. And um, we did gather a few questions already, and anybody else who still has some um, thoughts they'd like to share or questions for the research team, feel free to put them into the question pod. Um, but Krista, um, speaking of your poll on data quality, one of the questions that came in was around the quality of the coverage within this, um, this data resource. And wanting to know a little bit more about how you scan for data sets and what agencies can do if they know they have a ped bike data set that they don't see listed. I know you said some of them may, may be there but hidden, but how who do they go to? Um, do you want to go back to that slide with your um, contact information as well? You're muted, Krista. Oh, thank you. Um, so feel free to email us. That's that's probably the m most direct way. Um, but you can also on the website there is an email address. I think it's info at um, pedbikedata.org if I'm remembering right. Wes, is that? <laughs> it should be on the bottom of the each each um, web page. Um, so you can email that, and uh, we'll be checking that to see new data sets that we need to add. Um, and uh, Eventually, we'd like to have a form that you can fill out online. Um, hopefully, that'll be coming. Um, so that that's for updating. And then the other question about um, data quality and, and how we searched for things. Julia, do you want to say anything on, on the current revisions and how, how things were searched for? Um, well, I think we did most of the searching in phase one. And um, that was primarily just Google with different keywords. So the jurisdiction name and then um, 
you know, open data portal or, um, you know, collision data or other appropriate keywords. And we also, we gathered information that we hope to use for the data quality rating that I was talking about that would be a next step um, in, in terms of um, um, the, the detail on time period, for example, um, um, and some of the other things that we, we did for the states. Remember, I was talking about, about the states. I'll go back to that, um, where we, we looked at just the state data. Um, so we tried to gather some of the information we'll need for um, expanding that throughout the uh, data sets, but we haven't done the rating for all of the data sets. Um, does, did we miss part of the question? It was a long question with a lot of good points. So, Laura, anything I, we didn't cover there? No, I think that was good. Um, just to give the audience an understanding of how often you're updating these links and how they're found and how they can, can contribute to the database, I think was, was the gist of it. Um, we have another related question around how the um, data are coded. Are they coded by the agency that collects the data or by the jurisdiction in which it's covered? And if there's misclassification, how do they correct that? So for example, if VDOT is collecting the data, but it's in the Washington DC area, how are you coding those? Good question. Um, so we would code it by the agency collecting it in, in the name and the title, but um, so let me go to the um, detailed page. Um, so the agency owner is the agency collecting it, but um, if it's collected for a specific location, if that's clear on the website, then we would put that city. Um, so this is Lee County, well, um, metropolitan area, but the city that it's collected for seems to be Bonita Springs. Um, so is that limited to just that city? You know, this is kind of based on the information available on the on the website. Um, does that answer your question? I think it does. And um, another couple of questions relate to this data set in relationship to other known data sets. So how does this work relate to the Portland State's repository of count data? Great question. Um, so the, the, this data set, as you may have gleaned from, from our presentation, is only a listing, it's really a listing of URLs. And we're providing you some metadata about these data sets so that you can search them um, without having to do uh, extensive Google searches that we did. Um, and even if the URL disappears, you can say, okay, I know that data used to exist and contact the, the uh, agency to try to obtain it or, or um, find it. So it's really to be able to find data, whereas the Portland State um, uh, Bike Ped Portal database has data in it. It, it actually has the count data in their online data set. So we would point to that type of database. Um, in fact, we do. <laughs> I just made sure this morning. So um, that's that's how we, we are like a meta um, clearinghouse. Um, and that's what we're, our job is, is just to point to other people's data. Okay. Thank you. And I think another comment was made about um, just to mention that the Highway Safety Information System data is available um, by request, but is also free. Is that another data system that you all might point to? Go Wes. Yeah, I'll just add, yes, uh, HSIS is in there. It's definitely listed. Um, I think I said that it does cost money. I believe that there are different tiers of usage depending on the agency that you're with. I know when I was a graduate student, I requested and received um, some data. So it is available by request and it is linked within our clearinghouse. Okay. And um, just going back on the data coverage that you have in the database, um, one, we got one question, do you have data from all states? And I'm not sure if the um, asker is wanting to know about any type of data, but maybe you could cover all three. That is a good question. Um, I am going to have to 
do a quick search um, to, to give you the answer. Um, I don't have that right off the top of my head. Does anyone else? No, I don't know for sure, to be honest with you. I think we have most states last time I checked, but mm, we might be missing one. So I don't want to say that before. And this may be beyond the capabilities of the, the meta uh, clearinghouse, but if you were looking for a subset of crashes involving shared youth paths, uh, is that anything that can be searched through this resource? No, I, I don't think we included that specifically. You would have to go into each data set that we might link to and, and look for that. Okay. Yeah, that should be in a collision data set um, if it is anywhere. Um, Wes or Julia, do you want to add anything there? I don't have anything to add, Julia. Uh, no, I, th I think those might not even be in in all like collision data sets. So that those might be a tricky thing to find. Yes. We have another question about um, is the data here, is it only data that's collected by um, agencies or can consultants or members of the public more broadly contribute a data set? So it's data that's, that are hosted online by others. So if, if an agency or a um, consultant has this data hosted either on an agency's website or their own, um, then we could link to it. But it, it should be, like we said, we're prioritizing the freely available, publicly available data. So if it's behind a, a company's firewall, then um, probably are not going to link to that. Any other comments there, Wes or Julia? No, I think you captured it. That would be awesome. Um, speaking of like a, a next step, I think it'd be wonderful if we had some community driven data sets, say folks just generating their own accounts on a Google map or something, it'd be pretty neat to host. Um, if you have something like that, feel free to email us. And you mentioned that the data that you were searching for, you sort of had to prioritize very limited time and focus on the cities above 100,000 and MPOs. Um, if, you know, if time and other opportunities, resources were available, do you see a need to expand to the MPOs and the smaller localities? And how might we go about engaging them in the, the conversation around data needs and quality? Well, I think that's great. Oh. <laughs> I think that's a really great thing to do. Um, and I hope that we uh, can continue this work and include the smaller jurisdictions. Um, and because, yeah, setting up some data standards and encouraging others to use them is definitely part of our mission. Anybody else want to add to that? Uh, I'd say we encourage people to send us their data sets or links to their data sets so that we can include them. It was just too many um, cities in the U.S. for us to search for everyone. Mm -hmm. And going back to your discussion about the the ranking that you had, you you did identify a lot of communities that really only had you know, one, two, three stars. Um, do you see a way that um, Federal Highway Administration and others can use this database to have a better global sense of data quality and even some of the programs that may be a good model for others that do have those higher star ratings? Yeah, I, I, this is something that I'm very passionate about. So um, that's one reason I would like to do more of the rating so that we can set those who are doing a great job on a pedestal and say, look, these, this is a good, good, really good work. And everybody look at what they're doing and, and follow it. And, and if there aren't any that we can put in that category to identify what are the key things that need to be improved about these data. Um, and, and then data standardization is another <laughs> um, goal of ours. Mm -hmm. And Krista, um, I might just 
the data standardization, that was part of what we really uh, set out to fix with a lot of the cleaning in that um, data can often be uh, categorized under different labels, can be um, coded different ways. And so that was one of the big efforts that we worked on really last year uh, with the graduate students from UC Berkeley was going through these different data sets and trying to figure out, okay, what are things that are actual, like the same types of data, just they're categorized differently. And then how can we fix and clean that data? So yeah, having standards that everyone used uh, with consistent language would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, Laura, I have a, an answer or a pseudo answer um, on that previous question. <laughs> I've been playing with my little uh, spreadsheet here of all our data. Um, so we do have every state represented in some way or fashion, but not every state has all three uh, types of data, the collision data, the infrastructure data, and the count data. So some, some states are missing um, one or more of those. Okay, thank you. And Krista, just to clarify a little bit more around the collision data, is this data describing all types of collisions involving pedestrians and bicyclists, or are they all involving a car, or are you also capturing like falls or uh, incidents that may not involve a motorized vehicle? So most of these data are going to be the, the typical involving a motor vehicle data. There may be a few that include um, just single bicycle or single pedestrian <laughs> data, but I, I am not, I have not gone into it as, as in that detail to know if how many we have of those, if any. Um, so I hope may, maybe Wes or, or Julia have um, looked at that more carefully, but it's certainly, a, if it is, if we do have that, it's, it's going to be a small percentage. Julia, do you know? Um, so, most of the data sets are just your traditional police recorded crashes. So it depends on the jurisdiction, whether they're gonna report um, uh, collisions that uh, don't involve a motor vehicle. Um, some of the data sets are queried for bikes or pets, um, but I would say most are just um, all crashes um, with whatever the the standards are for the police reporting. Thank you. And um, you all also talked about when you were looking at the rating system, um, the linkability of the data being, you know, an important consideration. And um, are there ways that we can be thinking about linking even the data that is that is hosted within this platform, uh, the crash and collision? Uh, or sorry, the collision, the, the count and the inventory data. Are there resources around that that can be shared or developed in the future? Um, yes, definitely. Wes, do you wanna take that one? Uh, um... I think it's a wonderful idea. I So it would probably depend on how the data is currently coded and, and the jurisdiction. So, you know, GIS data might be a little bit easier to do if you can, uh, you know, just geolocate everything and then link those by latitude and longitude. Uh, that would definitely be a next step. Uh, I'm certainly interested in the idea. I don't necessarily have an answer for what the easiest way to do that would be. And I think Julia might have some thoughts on this one too. Um, I think uh, GIS makes all of that a lot easier. Um, and the big barrier with a lot of the data sets is um, that they're static data like PDFs or um, JPEG maps. So anyone who wants to use those data is gonna have to do a fair amount of data entry or <laughs> some kind of processing if the PDFs are um, vector data. Um, so, so that's the biggest challenge, I think, before we start linking too much. But um, I think GIS is probably the, the best way to go if we can have data in those formats. And, and that's why we prioritize the latitude and longitude as one of our um, higher uh, rating for linkage, because if you don't even know where the count or crash or whatever occurred, 
or where the sidewalk is, it's not very useful. Well, um, I think we are coming to a close on our time for the Q&A. We did have a couple of questions we couldn't get to, but we can certainly follow up with all uh, participants who submitted a question after the webinar. And I just want to give a big round of applause to Krista and Wes and Julia and the research team uh, for giving us a peek under the hood of the Ped Bike Clearinghouse and for all the work that you've done to compile this great resource. Um, we really have, I think, walked away from this project with a better sense of the state of Ped Bike data in the US and all the uh, important work that we have ahead of us um, to continue making this uh, a timely and accessible resource for both researchers and the field at large. Um, so again, thank you all for um, joining us and for your interaction today in all the polls and the Q&A. And uh, please stay tuned for our next webinar, June 1st, uh, talking a little bit more on the media side of our uh, safer system. And, it's July 1st, right? Sorry, July 1st. Yes, okay. thank you. <laughs> At 2 p.m. Eastern. Great. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Thank Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, everyone.